It's no secret that Intel's N97 is the best of their current ultra-budget CPU lineup. Or at least it isn't if you watch this channel. Any CPU in the N300 range starts to get slaughtered in price to performance, and the N150 still falls behind. So if the pricing is similar and the Mini's cooling and configuration is up to snuff, it's an easy win for the N97. The only problem is with its scarcity. Few Minis actually feature the CPU, so we're happy to look at a new one that does. This is another one in the tiny category going for minimal disk space use and portability. It's plastic and feels relatively solid, apart from a little flex on the top and bottom when some pressure is applied. So don't go stacking weights on it. Intel's N97 is a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU with UHD graphics, and the N97 beats out the N95, 100, 150, and 200 in graphics performance. Why the weird naming scheme? Only Intel knows. In the box is a wall power supply, HDMI cable, and VESA mount. Not common for these tinies. The Neo Z97 comes in at 200 US dollars on the official website with 512GB SSD storage and 12GB of LPDDR5 soldered memory. The front of it has just the power button, while inside it is Intel's Wi-Fi 6 AX101 for wireless and Bluetooth. The left side features triple USB 3.5 gigabit, while the back has dual Realtek gigabit along with a 3.5mm audio jack and barrel jack power input. Finally, on the right side, we have dual HDMI and DisplayPort, all maxing out at 4K 60Hz. A distinct lack of USB-C in the port selection. This Mini has four exposed screws next to the rubber feet. Remember when manufacturers used to put screws under the glued on rubber feet? Oh wait, that still happens. Only problem here is you'll need a long, thin screwdriver to reach the screws. Lift the bottom of the case, and there's the fan and heatsink. Gently pull out the board while watching out for the wireless cables. And here we have all the goodies exposed. M.2 wireless card, a 2280 NVMe SSD. Wow, I'm impressed they managed to squeeze it in. And underneath it is the CMOS battery. While the LPDDR5 is soldered on, it's running at 4000 mega transfers instead of the standard 4800, which is odd. But we've seen odd plenty of times before on this channel. Oh yes. Minix includes Windows 11 Pro and the OS image is free of malware and rootkits. Don't want to use Windows? No problem. Ubuntu worked without any issues. On to the benchmarks. Single core Cinebench shows the Z97 to be one of the better performers, with only one other N97 Mini ahead of it by a tiny margin. Multicore is a different story. The Blackview had a better score after a bias tweak, which placed it as one of the top results. The Minix, unfortunately, doesn't have this option. Geekbench Single Core comes back with a good result, and Multicore is pretty good, with only four other minis in this slot coming out ahead. Another area the Z97 does well is H.264 video encoding, although when the power limits were increased on the other N97 minis, they came out ahead. Using the same video file but switching to hardware encoding, and the time to complete dropped exactly by 200 seconds, and is far better than the N150 result we have so far. Intel's N97 has the best integrated graphics from the ultra cheapies. The N305 was way too expensive, and we haven't seen it since. Minix's Z97 has a decent 12% increase over the N150 in DX11 Firestrike, almost 17% in DX12 Timesfy, and 15.5% in DX12 Steel Nomad. Secure Boot wasn't enabled by default in the BIOS on this Mini, so I fired up Valorant to make sure it's working fine, and there's no problem here. The frame rate is decent, although the CPU is bottlenecking the GPU. In any case, it holds above 60 FPS average. Dota 2 leans heavily on the CPU, so much so that during battle the frame rate hovers around just 30 FPS, with GPU utilization being very low. I wanted to revisit Counter-Strike 2 with the N97. In my N150 showcase, I showed the CPU was bottlenecking the iGPU, and you can see that's still the case with the GPU sipping margaritas. I suspect this game could run around 25 frames per second with faster CPU cores, which would still be bad. But hey, I have to entertain myself somehow. It's been my plan to showcase a new game each time for these budget minis. Well. Here's Broken Sword, Shadow of the Templars, Reforge, a remake of one of my favourite point-and-click adventures from the mid-1990s. I was pleasantly surprised to see the remake runs full speed at 4K, no less. 
Oh my head. Never again. GTA 5 Enhanced Edition is another one I wanted to try out, but it runs too slowly at 1080p, minimal graphics settings. Well, maybe next generation. Moving on to emulation workloads. While you want to stick to 720p for a lot of the PS2 library, there are some games like Twisted Metal Head-On that can be upscaled to 1080p just fine. Mario Kart Wii on the Dolphin emulator runs too slow at 1080p and needs the resolution drop down to 720 for a solid 60fps. I was surprised to see the N97 fail the audio latency test with Cinebench running in the background. This usually happens due to thermal throttling, but that's not the case with this Mini. Something else is causing the high DPC latency. 1080p video editing on this Mini is possible if there's no other option. The CPU takes a hammering, but the iGPU is able to decode the video well enough to make editing a less laggy experience, and that's not surprising when it can decode many video formats at 4K 60fps, which makes this Mini a pricey, but really nice media player. The NVMe drive Minix has thrown in is better than usual. It's the second best performer in 3 Mark's comprehensive storage benchmark, even if it's running at just PCIe Gen 3 X1 speed, which tops out at around 900 megabytes sequential read and write. Temperature wise, it did very well even without cooling. Not too surprising when it's running at a quarter of its maximum bandwidth. Bluetooth range was a bit above average, which is good. There were no problems with wireless range at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. So, good job there. An overall idle power draw of 10 watts is nothing great. Less great is the maximum power draw, which is on the upper end. Although, when we add the performance mode numbers, it holds up much better. The Z97 doesn't get hot at all with a low maximum CPU temp. However, even though the noise level is far below the ones with really powerful hardware, Minix's Neo Z97 is one of the louder minis in the budget lineup. This tiny compute box is one of the smallest minis we looked at, taking up very little volume and surface space. It really is a nice portable mini PC if size is your main concern. The BIOS is accessed by mashing the delete key on startup. In the advanced tab there's wake on LAN and an AC power loss option. Not much else. Unfortunately you can't set the memory speed to 4800 mega transfers manually. 4000 is what you get. Ok, we've looked at the Minix Neo Z97 in detail. Here are the pros and cons. It's another tiny mini PC with Intel's N97, a CPU that's unfortunately not as common as it should be. The Z97 keeps the CPU temp low, although I would have liked to see an option to change the fan curve to delay the higher fan speed, as there's plenty of headroom. LPDDR5 is featured, but doesn't run at 4800 mega transfers. No USB-C is included, and the price is on the high side, making it a tough ask over N150 minis. Overall, a decent budget mini PC, with a few things that could have been improved to make it more attractive in the current market. And while this is 200 US dollars, you'd be surprised how much more performance you can get for an extra 100. Check out the difference with the Minix NGC NR660 review right here. Cheers!